ABC, Dave in Texas. Um, I thought I'd chime, chime in to a uh, thread that was started uh, a little a couple weeks back by uh, Gary, who has a channel uh, on the VC called uh, Cosmic Pickle. Uh, he was presenting some album covers that he uh, really enjoyed, and so I thought I'd do the same. Uh, Gary has real good insight on uh, a lot of the music he shows, and uh, you know how those musicians. Uh, you know, make their music and, uh, you know, has a lot of uh, insight on stuff like that. So, uh, at any rate, uh, I thought I would chime in on album covers. Now, the album covers that I'm showing aren't put in any type of genre. I mean, they're all just kind of clumped together. But uh, they're all uh, pretty good albums, and uh, I do like all the album covers. Uh, back before the web and the internet, uh, really the album cover was one of the main draws. I mean, when I was a kid growing up, boy, I, I, I'd go in like a record shop or something like that and look at uh, album covers all day long to kind of like determine maybe what album I wanted to buy or whatever. Uh, I've always grown up in small Texas towns, you know, about the size of, you know, 30,000 something like that. I lived in Austin for a while back in the 70s and I really love, I still love that town but uh, you know I wasn't, be, I wasn't able to keep a job there so I had to move on. I mean I've lived in in Lubbock and uh, other places as well. Uh, before I moved to East Texas I lived in the uh, Odessa Midland area and uh, they're you know fairly nice sized town. I guess once you get out of the uh, metropolitan areas like Dallas and Houston, San Antonio Austin and, and that such. Really all the towns in Texas are kind of small townish and I guess perhaps that's true for every state. But um, regardless of that, <coughs> uh, back in the uh, late 60s when I was a teen growing up, uh, really you know you had records everywhere. I mean uh, like uh, a lot of people sell them like just department stores like Montgomery Wards and Sears and Roebuck and uh, there was a place that I used to like to buy them at which was kind of a, a depa department store or a five and dime store called uh, TG&Y they had like the cheapest prices but even 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 a grocery store like Piggly Wiggly's which is where my mom would shop occasionally uh, she'd do her shopping and me and my brother would be over there where the albums are and they'd always be getting in new albums. We'd be thumbing through the albums trying to figure out what we wanted to buy next or just, you know, just wanted to see what was out. And uh, again, before the internet started, uh, you know, I'd, when I was going to college I'd look at High Fidelity Magazine and uh, Stereo Review or even like I, I think I'd pick up a circus magazine from time to time but uh, really how I got my album news or whatever I, was just through TV shows like I'd watch uh, the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour or uh, you know American Bandstand you know you'd kinda like watch shows like that to uh, try and figure out uh, what kind of music you wanted and then of course you know there's always friends you know, word of mouth, but uh, a lot of the albums that my friends uh, that I listened to over at their house, you know, I'd want to pick up as well. But at any rate, I wanted to show this book here. It's called 1000 Album Covers, and it's on the uh, Tation label by Michael Oakes, is the uh, person who compiled this book. But uh, the Tashin, which I think is, you can go to Tashin.com. They make a lot of art books like this, and I'm always a, a real sucker for art books like this because they have such pretty artwork. And uh, I don't know, I just always love thumbing through them. And uh, like this is a big, thick book, and if you particularly like uh, album covers and the art on album covers, 
you know, you might ought to take a look at this book because it's it's really beautifully presented presented as far as the, all the album covers that they do. Like I said, if you, you could probably find it on uh, eBay or uh, Amazon, but it's by Michael Oaks O C H S, and it's a big thick thick book. Anyway, when uh, Gary started talking about album covers, one of the first ones that I I thought of when he was doing that was this one here. This is uh, Weasel's Rip My Flesh by uh, the Mothers of Invention. And uh, it took me a while. I mean, I like the Mothers of Invention just about from since their first album. But um, for whatever reason, this particular album took me a little bit longer to get into. And that's probably because that it's, it's uh, done live. It's a live album. And so it has a little bit different... Uh, presentation to it. I mean, it's it's a little bit rougher around the edges, which now I, I really enjoy because it's a, a pretty accurate, uh, you know, view of how the mothers might have sounded live. But uh, <clears throat> at that time, I thought it was a little bit too rough and I wasn't, I wasn't used to it, but uh, you really can't, I'm a big Mothers of Invention fan and you can't re really go, this album is by Carl Shackle. I believe is the artist's name, and uh, what he did was take an old 40s uh, magazine ad of a guy back then shaving, and then of course he transposed this uh, weasel into the razor and created this album cover uh, with it. Carl Shackle did a lot of uh, the early Mothers of Invention albums and then uh, a lot of the other ones were also done by uh, a Texas artist, uh, Gary Panner, which uh, also did a lot of the uh, art and design for the uh, old Pee Wee Herman play ha uh, Playhouse episodes way back when. This is another one I thought of. This is uh, Captain Beefheart's uh, dock at the radar station. And uh, a lot of you know, probably know that uh, Don Van Vliet, or Captain Beefhearts, as he is known, was also a, a painter, and he painted this album cover. And uh, his art is very uh, reminiscent of the music that he plays. I mean, it's very uh, kind of a abstract expressionist in a way. He also did this little drawing right over here. But, uh, you know, if you like that style or, you know, of uh, art or his music too, you can go online and there's some uh, other, uh, you can see a lot of his paintings. I think there's even a book out now, which I wouldn't mind having, uh, that uh, shows a lot of his artwork. But you can find it online too and take a look at it. And look at what... It, it looks like what he did, if you can see this up close, he kind of drew these uh, figures here and then took a paintbrush and then just kind of marked it all out. But for some reason this album cover has always appealed to me. This is an, another album. It's by uh, Malcolm Dowglish and Gray Larson, The First of Autumn. I really love this uh, it kind of looks Van Gogh like uh, a Van Gogh painting or something and I'm not real sure who did this artwork I don't know that it tells on here but it may but um, it's kind of a fairly obscure album by uh, these two musicians and uh, it has a, uh, a real Appalachian type uh, sound to it and it's very indicative of the uh, season of autumn. It uh, has hammered dulcimers in it, and uh, which kind of sound a little bit like a harp in some ways. But it's got like uh, tin whistles and uh, English concertina, fiddles and guitars and pianos, and there's some a few vocals in it. And uh, one of these guys plays spoons. <laughs> like they do up in the Appalachian uh, parts of the country. 
but um, you could probably go on, on Spotify or uh, maybe even YouTube and hear some of this album but uh, I think this album here is really pretty unappreciated and, and not one that uh, not a lot of people of know, know of these two musicians but uh, this album here is really beautiful this is another one album cover I, I really like this is uh, the Association's birthday album uh, the Association are definitely a band of the uh, late 60s that were kind of a vocal group and uh, they were a, a sunshine pop band is, is where I'd kind of how I'd kind of categorize them but they had a lot of really beautiful uh, vocalizations and harmonies in their uh, albums and this one here is no exception I mean uh, Man, as far as harmonies and everything, or, or this would be one of those albums like people say if you are uh, feeling glum or you know not having a a good day, what album would you put on? Probably put on something like this, or maybe even the Beach Boys album. But uh, they're so joyous, it's uh, you know not hard to, to start feeling happy again. <coughs> Here's one by uh, Are We Not Men? No, we are Devo. Devo were a neat band I, uh, for the 70s and that uh, punk, punk aesthetic. Although sometimes they, they kind of, uh, well, I guess they were firmly in the punk, punk aesthetic, but uh, they also kind of fell outside that too as well. But, um, I assume that this album cover here, and I haven't looked at it, but uh, I assume it was kind of created by uh, Mark Mothersbaugh, and uh, there was another guy that cre helped start this band, and I forget his name, but uh, as you know, Devo were kind of a punk band, and kind of a uh, surreal um, Dada-ist band, and uh, I kind of always liked this album cover. It was just bizarre. And uh, as far as art goes, kind of the bizarre, uh, you know, kind of uh, appeals to me. I don't know why it is, but uh, anyway, I've always loved uh, Mark Mothers of All. Aesthetics, which again, going, it's kind of like that Zappa album. Kind of goes back to this uh, this man here kind of goes back to that 40s, old 40s uh, advertising uh, you know, ads, you know, back in the day, you know, you'd see like a, a guy like that back in the ads or uh, in some oddball, uh, <laughs> which I guess aren't, aren't, isn't that odd, but something like, uh, I don't know, like mechanical, some mechanical magazine or something. This is The Man Who Sold the World by David Bowie. Started to uh, put David's uh, Diamond Dogs album, which I like as well, but then I, he has a lot of good album covers. <clears throat> and and uh, But I like this one because of the cartoony cover of it. And uh, this album here is on Mercury, and I don't know the... Uh, history of uh, this but it looks like see how it's kind of it's got this along the spine here like kind of like this thing was I don't know slap dashed together or, or maybe uh, I don't know is it, quality control <laughs> wasn't a part of this album that's all I know but um, at any rate uh, this out al this is album uh, you know they changed the, the covers on this album I don't really know why but uh, I do like it for the uh, cartoon on the cover this one is by uh, Leo Kotke uh, this is his dreams and all that stuff album but uh, it's a photograph and uh, Leo Kotke is a uh, acoustic guitar player he, he might play some uh, 
electric guitar too, but uh, a lot of his albums are just electric, or excuse me, acoustic guitar music. And uh, he plays some, uh, probably some electric guitar too, and some 12 string, and slide guitar and dobro. A lot of them are, are uh, just uh, instrumental, but occasionally he'll sing, and uh, a lot of his uh, songs are kind of wry, uh, uh, has a lot of wry humor or uh, wit in them. But I like this uh, album cover for the uh, desert-like background back here, and you also got this guy uh, in this mask sitting next to him. Which the name of the album is Dreams and All That Stuff, and, it, and this album kind of really uh, has a surreal, dreamlike uh, image to uh, go along with the title. <coughs> Here's another one that's just a photograph. This is uh, Steve Tibbetts album. This is um, YR year. I don't know if it's year or YR, uh, how you pronounce that. But um, I like this album cover because it just it shows these ruins in the background, probably in England somewhere, maybe. But uh, you know, this album cover just kind of reminds me of ancient civilizations and, and all the people back in those days. It kind of just makes my wa my mind wonder. It's just like, wow, how did people live back then? Uh, Tibbetts is a uh, guitarist, and uh, a little bit of his music kind of falls into that category of uh, world music. There's a little bit of an Indian influence here with the uh, uh, kalimba. And there's some uh, various congas and percussions on this album. Like I said, this is only ECM label. But uh, there's some bass and everything. But uh, this is a really neat album. Uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. This is another one that's uh, just a photograph. This is the... Uh, Jan Gabark or Jan Gabark group and uh, the name of this album is Photo with Blue Sky, White Cloud, Wires, Windows and a Red Roof. So uh, it's really <laughs> how apropos can you be for an album cover or for an album title like that. And uh, as far as ECL, ECL ECM albums go. Uh, this one is uh, pretty light. It's pretty light jazz. Not real light jazz, but it's not quite as uh, atmospheric and uh, you know quite as dark as some EC albums are. Particularly, particularly the earlier ones. I think this came out in the uh, yeah, this is 79, 1979. But um, it was a little bit of a departure for uh, Gabarik. But uh, I really like this album cover, though, the photograph on it. And it's a beautiful album. Here's another one in the jazz uh, category. This is the Modern Jazz Quartet. And I believe this may be their first album. It's a repressing. Concord is the title of it. But and it's another really great jazz album. If you've not heard this album, it's a, a good one to pick up. This one has uh, vibes on it by Milt Jackson. Uh, John Lewis plays piano. Uh, Percy uh, Heath plays bass, and Connie Kay on drums. But uh, the vibes really stand out in this album. I kind of like the way this. It kind of looks like it reminds me of Europe, but who knows where they took this picture. But uh, I like the blue and the purple on it. Here's one by uh, Elvis Costello, his Imperial Bedroom. 
Elvis Costello and the, and the attractions uh, started out in the punk movement or uh, new wave and uh, they, that's how they kind of were introduced ever introduced to the public but I like this album cover A for the colors in it and everything and it has a little bit of a uh, a uh, kind of cubist uh, Pablo Picasso vibe going on it. It kind of reminds me of that uh, painting that Pablo Picasso did called Three Musicians, I believe is what the title of it was. But uh, also with this album I thought that the uh, Costello and the Attractions were starting gra gradually uh, getting away from uh, sort of that punk sound trying to broaden themselves and uh, sort of like mature their sound into other directions but uh, yeah just for the artwork alone it's uh, I like that album cover. This is one but it's a progressive album it's uh, Steve Hackett's first album this is a uh, voyage of the uh, Acolyte uh, as you know Steve uh, Hackett was the guitarist for uh, the band Genesis and I, I really like the uh, inside of this uh, gatefold where the uh, old uh, wizard or whatever he is there uh, is sitting but it has uh, like Genesis their album kind of conveyed, conveyed a lot of uh, fantasy and uh, maybe some uh, maybe some surrealism too, particularly uh, oh that album the lamb the lamb lays down on Broadway, and a lot of their other songs got quite surreal uh, in the way they sounded. But uh, but yeah, I mean this the album cover and the inside art on this really uh, is indicative of. Uh, a lot of uh, Hackett's sound here and uh, also I mean uh, reminds me of Genesis. Hackett is on here with uh, Bill Rutherford which uh, played with Genesis and Phil Collins. Uh, Sally Oldfield uh, does a vocal on here and uh, yeah really good album. Can't hardly beat it. Uh, this album is by a Aeolia, possibly that's how you say his name, Aeolia, the light of Tao. Uh, I picked this one up really just on the, uh, I mean I probably heard some of his music on Hearts of Space way back when. It was a syndicated uh, radio show that I used to take and uh, I probably heard some of his music on there on uh, Hearts of Space. It's got two songs on both sides, but really I, I probably picked it up for this album cover alone. I really always think this album cover is pretty beautiful. Um, I, it's been a while since I've heard this and there probably are some kind of like a, a little bit of an Asian influence in the sound he uh, has on this album but uh, like I said I haven't heard it in a while and uh, but yeah it's it's a new age album you know a lot of uh, synthesizer and uh, there's some uh, vocoder, zithers, sitar, tambora, chimes, piano, uh, some flute you know like a lot of other uh, new Age albums of the time period, you know, it's just kind of a, a sort of a, a well, very imaginative, I'll put it that way. This is another photograph and another ECM album. Uh, this is Gateway 2 by uh, it's got John Abercrombie, Dave Holland, and uh, Jack DeJunette on drums. And uh, it's a really great album. If you don't, haven't heard this album, uh, it's a real subtle uh, ECM type album. And one of the things I liked about this album, I always wondered, is like how they took this photograph 
because as you can see there's a doorway at the back of it and then you got this blue overlay here and I'm not sure it looks like it's part of a building but I'm not sure if they just maybe mocked up something here and lined this up to where they shot it and the doorway was in the background there I'm not real sure how they did this photograph it's always kind of uh, <laughs> mystified me in some ways but uh, it's a beautiful photograph and a beautiful album as well that's Jack DeJunette on piano on the back uh, there's Amber Crombie and here's uh, Dave Holland on uh, be it stand up bass yeah. great album though this is an album going way back to the 60's <laughs> my teen years of the 60's this is Grand Funk Railroad E Pluribus Funk uh, and I just included it because it's a unusual album made like a coin but uh, Grand Funk Railroad were a hard hard rock band way back when and uh, I don't know I've, albums like this I don't listen to that much now but I don't get rid of them because I know as soon as I do <laughs> I want to hear some hear it again and and there you go then I won't have it to listen to so I mean I've called through a lot of my uh, records and sold off some and some I've had to, I've sold off and I wish I hadn't and then I've had to buy back again like uh, oh spirits first album the uh, California uh, rock band Spirits first album I, I had to do that way and uh, believe it or not even I even uh, got rid of King Crimson's first album and then had to buy, buy it back again and bought it like on CD and uh, so on and so forth but uh, I never get rid of it now because I really love that album but at any rate this is part two I don't want it to go on so long because it'll take me like three days to uh, <laughs> upload this thing. I might do a part two later because I, I pulled out so many albums back in the back part of the house there's e there's uh, you know enough to make a part two on this more or less so I may just do that later but for now I wanted to come on here and show a few albums that I, I really like and the album covers and art that uh, I've bought throughout the years so uh, just wanted to do that and say uh, hello to everybody on VC. hope everybody is to join the new year and uh, be well.